students ask me all the time, man, I get nervous. What should I do? Just tell them, just figure that the people who are there to hear you, are, they, they want to hear something sound good. And there's nothing you'd rather be doing in front of all them people than playing because that's what you spend most of your time doing. So then I just, in, in, in auditions, it's the worst. It's more, you get more nervous, I think, for that than even playing for people. Because with people, you, you, you get a certain warmth. For an audition, everybody's just doing a job. Like, oh, well, let's see if you can play. And you know the people who are listening to you are really on the highest level of hearing, and they can really discern every mistake. So I think when I get nervous, I just, my, my, my palms start to sweat, you know. I, my mouth gets dry. I say, well, when you got to play. So I just hope it comes out. <laughs> sometimes it does, sometimes it does. I'm just grateful to have, to be playing another night. And then I'm trying to play something that will make people feel good and make them want to like jazz music. No, but really, I'm re truly grateful. I mean, we used to say a prayer. We stopped doing it in the band every night before we would go on and just say, help us to concentrate. and Just, just something for us to get together, our minds together, and concentrate and go out and play and uh, not take it for granted. Just to feel fortunate to have the opportunity to play for people, come out, they clean, with they with they with their wives and their girlfriends or girlfriends with their boyfriends and little kids are here and their grandma, you know, it's a night out and they want to have a good time and you want to play good so that the power of the music can be, you don't have to do too much other stuff, just play and sound good enough for people to say, yeah, you know, we enjoyed that, they have a good time. They'll remember it'll be a part of their life, you know, yeah, we went and heard him play and he it was it was pretty good. Part of being an adult in anything, though, know, you have a responsibility. That's what adult behavior is, is in my mind, acceptance and responsibility. Like if you don't have that, then you, you have a childlike relationship to something, which is you only have a right. You have to do that if you're trying to deal with something beautiful, because every, everything, every create man creation that a man makes of beauty is a declaration against ugliness. So just that in itself is, is a statement. Even if you don't say anything, somebody asks you, what do you say? I don't know. But if you're creating something beautiful, like Monk, he didn't talk that much, but you knew what he was thinking about. <laughs> it was very clear. Or somebody like Duke Ellington was real gracious. He would just say, oh, yes, well, whatever. Yes, Dave. But that, his music, that lets you know what he, what he thought about. One mistake that people commonly make is that when there are current events going on, they often compare it to something from the past. It's almost like an opposite version of back in my day, except, oh, yeah, this is the same as how it used to be. Uh, for example, the first thought is, oh, yeah, this was like stuff that I was hearing when I was growing up. While some of that's true, there's still some slight differences. Like, I'd give some examples of things like that when I was a kid. For example, I remember a kid was talking about Slick Rick and his profane lyrics, but you didn't have a whole lot of kids rapping his lyrics in school. And I also remember when the rap group Two Live Crew came up with the song, Me So Horny. I heard it on the radio, and it was, man, like 10 at night. It was like real late, you know? And I thought, well, okay, that's a stupid song, and I moved on. But then all of a sudden, they started to make news headlines, and that's when I think, yeah, rap might be in trouble, because this kind of stuff is getting publicity. But here's the point that I want to make, is that I don't recall Two Live Crew and their shows with the half-naked women uh, simulating sex acts and doing, which is now known as twerking. I don't recall them going to elementary schools and doing shows. I have this older brother who's a trumpet player. And in the 1980s, he was very critical of pop music. And he was really critical of the exploitation of rap. And he was excoriated for it. And there's a lot of people that have hated him because of that. In the 1970s, all these trashy movies came in and turned women and ladies to bitches and hoes. Uh, dick grabbing goes on all the time. I see people on the stage, now they grab themselves. That's a statement. Uh, the black community became the ghetto. Somebody who grew up in a home before where they, perhaps they didn't have money, they were lower class, but they weren't low class. Like we never had a lot of money. You know, my father was struggling as a musician with six kids, but he set examples for us. And we grew up in the community. This is why I go in the community all the time. And I don't believe that this vulgarity and trash is being put out here as the black way. That's not the black way. And what we're supposed to be doing is realizing the democracy, realizing what it means for all of us to come together. And this is not something that can be reduced to a slogan. 
dues have to be paid yes. for this to take place. And that is what is central to jazz music, the paying of dues. I heard that would take promotion. Ironically, if you look at what's going on in pop music today, I bet you those statements wouldn't be seen as so controversial.